The seas and oceans of Africa have always been rich in natural resources and from antiquity has been a vital source of economic activity and livelihood for millions of Africans. With an abundant variety of fishery resources, the waters of Africa have attracted ocean-going fishing vessels from all over the world for many years. In recent times, the discovery of rich offshore and deep water oil and gas fields has further increased the tempo of economic activity within African waters. Today, the African maritime domain is plagued with a myriad of issues ranging from the adverse effects of global warming on the marine ecosystem, excessive exploitation of fish resources, the impact of oil and gas exploration and exploitation coupled with serious seafaring security issues. All of this demands concerted, sustained and strategic solutions. Nigeria, as the leading economic power on the continent, with an over 800-kilometer coastline, is naturally expected to take a lead role in this regard. Dr. Dakuku Pitisaid is the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. Aside from the issue of cargo that we generate and cargo that we receive, um, if you look at our strategic location, we're geostrategically located, we're with distance between West Africa and Central Africa. We have a long coastline of about 853 kilometers. We have one of the longest navigable inland waterways in the world, close to 10,000 kilometers. That's pretty long. And in addition, um, we have major stake in shipping. We are the first country to evolve our own cabotage law as far back as 2003. Other com countries are copying the Cabotage Act, which started in Nigeria. We model ours after the Jones Act. And so in every way you look at shipping, we're a major stakeholder. We've always been a leader. We've always been a respectable voice globally in the area of maritime. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, has the responsibility of regulating maritime activity as well as ensuring safety and security of Nigerian territorial waters. The agency has a wide mandate and has over the years acquitted herself creditably. As a major maritime country, statistics indicate that domestic and international shipping traffic on Nigerian waters is considerably high all year round. The discovery of offshore oil fields and very remote deep water oil and gas assets have further increased the tempo of maritime activity in Nigerian waters, making Nigeria the biggest and busiest maritime nation in the Western Central Africa region. Dr. Dakuku Pitisaid, the Director General of NEMASA, appears to be acutely aware of the strategic nature of his responsibility. We think there is a big responsibility it's a mandate that is both extensive and deep. We've not been able to cover the entire gamut of our mandate, but it's a work in progress. In the, in the past 12 months, I think that we've made considerable progress in the area of regulation of shipping, in the area of enforcement of the Cabotage Act, in the area of promotion of shipping. We have more Nigerians now involved in the coastal trade than we were a few years ago. And so, on the whole, I think that we've made a lot of progress. There's still a lot of ground to be covered. Barely two years after independence in 1962, precisely on the 15th of March, Nigeria became a member of the International Maritime Organization, the IMO. The IMO is a United Nations specialized agency with responsibility for the safety and security of shipping and the prevention of marine pollution by ships. The organization is the global standard setting authority for the safety, security and environmental performance of shipping. Mr. William Azu, the Director of African Regional Affairs of the IMO, who just happens to be a Nigerian, led a five-man high-powered delegation to the third Association of African Maritime Administrations Conference. We have 171 member states globally. And um, in Africa, you have 54 countries, 38 of them uh, member states of IMO, well, all are supposed to be, and then out of the 38, you have some landlocked countries, 
about 16 of them. Now, Nigeria is a coastal country, coastal, port state, and flag state country. Now, in terms of relevance, speaking about Nigeria, Nigeria is significant in the sub-region and has maritime potentials. Nigeria's commitment to the ideals of the IMO is total, with the ratification of 35 IMO conventions and protocols, as well as the amendment in 2007 of the 1962 Nigerian Merchant Shipping Act, in order to give effect to a number of maritime safety and marine pollution conventions and protocols. Shipping is an international industry governed by international rules, governed by international codes and conventions. There are many things you need to deal with internationally. We are an active member of the IMO. Recall that we are also in a council of IMO. Presently, we are not in a council of IMO. Uh, we are aspiring to go back to council so that we will be on the seat where decisions concerning shipping and maritime is made daily. We need to be there. We are an African leader and um, I don't think we have an option actually. In 2012, NEMASA, alongside 15 other African maritime administrations as well as several other maritime-related organizations, took part in what was the first formal Heads of Maritime Administrations and Ship Registrars Conference in Mombasa, Kenya. The conference was a direct response to Africa's insignificant share of global maritime investments, despite the very significant global maritime traffic it generates. Inevitably, there was a need to bring together like-minded agencies and associations to deliberate on Africa's maritime governance. Mr. Subantu Tilahi is the chief executive of the South African Maritime Authority and the immediate past interim chairman of the Association of African Maritime Administrations. It occurred to us that you needed um, an association of administrators because it is these people that go to international maritime organization together. It is these people that must govern using the same set of rules that come from IMO. So it does help us that to contextualize these rules for the African scenario. And that is what informed the coming together of the um, African maritime administrators. The second conference of heads of African maritime administrations took place in Santon, South Africa. And much like the first conference, it was attended by various African countries alongside Ship Owners Association and other related international bodies. And if you look at the challenges, we've got similar challenges, very low intra-regional trade, very low um, compliance with international legislation, um, porous borders, um, coastlines that are not properly policed, coastlines that are not properly governed. So it occurred to us that we have similar challenges that we can only address if we look at them and we approach them as a uni in unison. Hosting the third conference at the Transcop Hilton Hotel Abuja from the 19th to the 21st of April 2017 could be regarded as a privilege and acknowledgement by the African maritime community of Nigeria's leadership and commitment to developing a sustainable African maritime industry. African leaders have signed a number of instruments, be the Agenda 2063, be the what they call the Africa Integrated Maritime Strategy 2050, be the, the Lome Charter. We have a number of common instruments endorsed by African leaders. Now, to enforce these instruments, you need the maritime administrations to be on the same page. Coming together would afford us the opportunity of being on the same page, looking at it from the same perspective, and enforcing the aspirations, vision, of our leaders. And so there are many reasons why we need to come together. Is it in capacity building? Is it in the human element component that we need to deal with? Is it in growing our tonnage? Is it ensuring that we get a fair deal in relation to uh, other continents of the world? We don't want to go um, uh, to IMO or dealing with other nations from a servant mentality. We want to deal with them as equal partners on the same footing. These are many other reasons are compelling reasons, imperative reasons, why we all need to come together to pull our resources together and work from a common platform. The theme of the conference, sustainable use of Africa's oceans and seas, reflects a global concern for the unsustainable practices that threaten the ecosystem, maritime trade and security. The theme is very apt, it's not by accident, it's in line with the global thinking. 
or the blue economy, sustainable development, and all that go with it. On the eve of the opening ceremony of the conference, the Transcop Hilton, venue of the Third Association of African Maritime Administrations Conference, was a beehive of activities as delegates arrived and were accredited. Event planners were putting finishing touches to the Congress Hall and cultural troops were busy rehearsing. And there was a very concerned Director General ensuring that everything was on point. Suffice to say that many of the delegates, some of whom came from as far away as Jamaica, were very impressed. I was pleasantly surprised when I landed, albeit very early in the morning yesterday at 5 o'clock, and I was very efficiently processed, brought through and taken to the hotel. And here I am at this very eventful uh, meeting which is going to take place tomorrow, and it's a great honor for me to be here at the invitation of my counterpart here, who is Dr. Dakako uh, Peterside, to participate and to see and observe the proceedings here among fellow maritime administrators. Nigeria is a very huge country and it's a very important country in Africa at all here. So uh, I think it's a play a very good role and a very important role in uh, many issues such like maritime, transport, oil, and so on. So Nigerian uh, people as well, yeah, they are very kind and very close, uh, either to Egypt or to the others. Yeah. So uh, we have to be honored by Nigeria. Day one of the conference was rounded up with a meet and greet cocktail, which saw professional colleagues and delegates from not just Africa, but indeed all over the world catching up and making new acquaintances. Day two of the Third Association of African Maritime Administrations Conference witnessed a flurry of activities from quite early in the day with esteemed delegates making their way to the Congress Hall of the Transcorp Hilton and organizers efficiently processing their entry. Mrs. Mfon Ekong Isoro, the Secretary General of the Abuja MOU, a delegate, was kind enough to share her thoughts just before the opening formalities of the conference. From the perspective of um, Abuja MOU, on post-state control in West and Central Africa. Nigeria is definitely among the top three countries that perform very well with regard to their inspection of foreign vessels that come into um, all our ports. In any case, AMA is um, an organization of all the maritime administrations in Africa. Um, two conferences have been held and they decided that Nigeria should hold the third one. Given our role in facilitating the establishment of AMA, it was very important that Nigeria take the lead in hosting this conference. The conference proper was an assemblage of the who is who of the maritime industry from not just Africa, but all over the world. Dr. Dakuku Peterside, the Director General of NIMASA, did the honors of delivering a welcome address. We consider it a privilege to host this important conference that coalesces Africa's maritime elite, the men and women, who determine standards, when, how, what, and who to sail on the high seas, the juggle of peace, wealth, and security. Nigeria has waited with bated breath for this day and year to host this important gathering. We are particularly delighted that this conference 
is holding anchor here on our shores. Nigeria's place in the maritime world is not only deserved, it is common knowledge. It is special in the maritime community in Africa for a number of reasons. Nigeria accounts for over 60% of total seaborne traffic in volume and value in West and Central Africa region. I am optimistic that the Abuja Conference will sail to its shore. It will mark the beginning of concerted cooperative and collaborative efforts at tackling Africa's maritime administration challenges, as well as tapping into our limitless opportunities. Africa's waterways will be better at the end of this conference than it was at the beginning. The Honorable Minister of Transport, the Right Honorable Rotimi Amechi, then gave some remarks to set the tone of discussions for the conference. Nigeria wishes to restate its commitment to continually contribute to the growth of maritime sector on the continent of Africa and globally. It is our expectation that this conference will address how to redeem our pride from our policy, retrieve insecurity from our restive waters, fish out profit from our seas, and sail on wavering to our goals. We own the key to quiz and we should show it. We have to rebrand our continent as an emerging power. This conference should significantly increase Africa's stake in global seaborne trade and the emerging blue economy through responsible maritime governance. Goodwill messages from the IMO were then given by the representative of Mr. Kiktak Lim, Secretary General of the IMO. The choice of the theme of your third conference, sustainable use of Africa's oceans and seas, is no accident as it captures the fundamental issues involved in the future of sustainable maritime development in Africa. Distinguished guests, Your Excellency, I look forward to the positive and implementable outcome of your conference. I am a will continue to partner with Africa in the provision of the necessary technical assistance in both human and institutional capacity building. I wish you all well as you deliberate on the future of maritime Africa. The Speaker of the Nigerian House of Representatives, the Right Honorable Yakubu Dogara, also was present and he gave a goodwill message. I'm particularly delighted by the theme of the conference, which is sustainable use of African oceans and seas. The relevance of this topic to Nigeria's quest for sustainable economic development cannot be overemphasized. The days of paying lip service to the emergence of skilled indigenous seamen and seawomen and indigenous fleet owners, not vessel owners, are well over. A strong man lifts the cargo he generates. Therefore, Africa must possess the capacity to leave the cargo it generates, be they dry or wet, if it must qualify as a strong maritime continent. And then it was time for a keynote address, which was delivered by a representative of Mr. Soren Skow, the CEO of Maersk Group Worldwide where he spoke about maritime trade facilitation and economic development in Africa. Over 80% of the volume of world merchandise trade is carried by sea. And an even higher percentage of developing country trade is carried in ships. Global seaborne trade and world merchandise trade have both been growing at a faster rate than global GDP since 1990. Not all developing countries have managed to take advantage of the trade opportunities that come from globalization and increased trade facilitation, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. High trade costs and supply side constraints may be one explanation as to why countries in Africa are not able to take advantage of trading opportunities. One measure to address these constraints is to invest in physical infrastructure, that is essential to carry out production and trade, so as to allow traders easier access to international markets. We as MERSC are very pleased to be a part of this conference of African maritime administrators, and we hope at the end of this conference, 
will all be inspired with the political will to ensure the sustainable use of Africa's oceans and seas for efficient trade. The Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, was represented by Senator Ibn Nala, who gave a goodwill message on his behalf. For us in Nigeria, the objective of a vibrant Nigerian maritime industry cannot be overemphasized. This is why we are once again within a cocktail of legislative intervention. We have rolled out to revitalize the Nigerian transport sector and are looking at more ways to improve the effectiveness of the Nigerian maritime industry. The Association of Heads of Africa Maritime Administration is a valuable instrument for creating convergence and viability into the practice of maritime administration and safety in Africa. This is why the National Assembly supports this initiative and hopes that the African maritime market would very soon have a new lease of life. And then came the grand moment when the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, mounted the podium on behalf of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, to declare the Third Association of African Maritime Administrations Conference open. Clearly the enormous untapped potential for making for the making of a strong, self-reliant African economy lies embedded in the blue economy. It's a task of you, the seasoned leaders of the sector, to guide us, if you'll pardon the pawn, on this crucial voyage. The challenges are many, but not insurmountable. The good news is that we are on the right path. Collaboration and synergies. Our countries have to continue to develop the maritime sector, beginning with the national level to the sub-regional and regional levels. Here in Nigeria, we have taken steps to tackle some of the issues peculiar to us, while still requiring regional and sub-regional collaboration. It is therefore my special pleasure to declare this conference open. I wish you fruitful and productive deliberations. Thank you. Right after declaring the conference open, the Vice President was called upon to unveil the new corporate identity of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. It's my very special pleasure and privilege to unveil the logo of the new NIMAS. was thus launched on a very positive note with delegates looking forward to meaningful deliberations.